G'day everybody. So um, I did have big, big plans to go live on YouTube. Um, however, apparently my phone doesn't support that feature um, going live on YouTube. So, you know, I probably should have checked it out first and done a bit of a test drive and made sure that it worked. But hey, you know, I didn't. So here we are doing it on Facebook. So I've had the forge on now for roughly about the last 20 minutes, just getting everything pre-warmed. Um, what we're gonna be doing tonight is annealing the steel. Um, for those of you who don't know um, what annealing steel is, basically when you, get, uh, when you start working steel, it gets stressed and it gets really, really tight. And what the annealing does is allows that to soften up and um, to become, become a lot more uh, easier to work. So before we harden any steel, we always do an annealing cycle. When we do the annealing cycle, what that means is that we're going to heat it up, heat up the steel until non-magnetic, non which is somewhere around 850 odd degrees thereabouts and then we're gonna let it sit and cool down by itself. Now the reason why I've decided to do this at night, and it was quite common with the bladesmiths when they were making the Japanese style katanas. Um, what, what I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see is what they called um, the creeping of the shadow. If you've annealed the steel correctly, you should start to see an even uh, shadow creep across the face of the blade. It's really quite special. Um, I was absolutely amazed when I very first saw it for the first time. So I'm just gonna go grab the blades and uh, yeah, put them into the forge and hopefully you guys like what you're watching and um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, drop us a subscribe on YouTube for the future videos that will be going up there. If you've got any questions, pop them in. Just say g'day. Let me know that you're there. Um, because of the way the phone's set up, I can't see you unless you comment. So, yeah, here we go. So what we've got here is the Nakiri which is a flat edged knife, or it's, it, it's basically a vegetable cleaver, which will be going in. It's 1075 hard, hard carbon, oh, sorry, high carbon steel. And then we've got the Kiritsuki, which is the all rounder chef's knife used by Japanese chefs. As you can probably already see, I've roughed in the bevel. The unique thing about these knives is that they're single bevel, so it comes down kind of like a chisel point. So for right-handers, the bevel's on the right hand. For lefties, it's on the left. Lefties can't use rights, and rights can't use lefties. It's kind of one of the more customized, personalized things that I really like about these knives is, you know, we make them tailored to the person. So we try to capture the personality of the person and we try to caption out, caption, cap the, um, the use, the application, how they're going to use it and try to give them a knife that's custom for what they're going to actually be doing with it. What I will do before I uh, start playing with the fire I'm going to put on my big heavy gloves, nice big welding gloves to protect myself from the heat. I've got my welder's jacket on so that I'm, you know, in the event that I drop something, I'm nice and safe. Safety first, it is gas, it is fire, and this steel is roaring hot when it comes out, so I need to make sure that, you know, I'm nice and protected.
set of box draw tongs. We're going to grab onto the tang. Slide the blade in. Trying to get the, uh, the blade outside the hottest part to start off with. What I'm trying to do is bring up the temperature of the steel slowly. I don't want it to come all the way up super, super fast and all the way back down super, super fast. This is all about being gentle, being careful, and taking your time. Now I'm just opening up the back of the forge because these blades are so long. What I'm trying to do is be able to poke them all the way through, all the way in, all the way out. backwards and forwards, trying to eat up, heat up the blade as evenly as possible. Making sure that we don't get any, uh, any places in the blade that are heated up or hardened or softened more than another section. might have noticed that I placed the blades in with the bevel faced up and that's because when the when the flame comes crashing down onto the bottom of the uh, of the bottom of the forge that will circulate out and up which means whatever's whatever's touching the bottom of the forge is going to get a lot hotter a lot faster and with the tip of the blade being so much thinner than, uh, than the spine of the blade. We want to make sure that the spine heat gets more heat than the tip. You can see that now starting to glow. Magnet off to the side, which I'm just going to check whether or not we're magnetic, which is still magnetic. So we keep heating up until we're not. Unfortunately, I've only got a single burner forge, which makes my job just a little bit trickier. I'm trying to get the heat in the tip of the blade as well as in the heel of the blade, evenly. It's quite difficult to do, just on a single burner. This forge is just a nice simple, uh, nice simple fire brick forge. There's absolutely nothing special or fancy about it. It's just something that I've made myself, put together, done a lot of research, Frustrated Mel no ends, talking about my different burners and my bricks, trying to get this done correctly. Just gonna check him again. Alright. There's a section there that's not magnetic, which means it'll be coming up to temperature.
I've just taken off one of my gloves because I'm finding it difficult to hold on to the tongs. So I've got one protected hand and one that I'm keeping further away from the flame. center. Alright, time to get started on the Nikita. Thank you. 
straw tongs are designed so that the blade's not moving side to side. Keeping it all nice and stable for me. are going to be getting annealed tonight. For anybody who's wanting to watch the next part, which is hardening or quenching the blade, I'll be doing that tomorrow night. So I'm going to let these blades slowly cool down overnight until they're touch cool. And uh, yeah, tomorrow they're going to be getting hardened.
tip just doesn't seem to want to heat up for me. That's all right, take your time. There's no rush in doing it correctly. This is why we want to take our time, make sure it's all nice and even. Just because at the end of the day, when I send a knife out to a customer, I don't want there to be any flaws that we can or that we can't see. So if I know that there's a problem in the tempering set, uh, process, that's going to carry on to the rest of the knife. That one section of the blade will be softer than all the rest of the knife, which is bad. We want nice, steady, even results. All the time, every time. That's one really good thing that the bees have taught me, which, you know, it's the one job that I've had. Lots of you will know that, that I know would have heard me say it before. Beekeeping is one of the only jobs that I know of where the bees will punish you for going too fast. You try and make things happen too quickly, do things in the way that's incorrect. The bees will let you know. And I'll tell you what, the blades, there's absolutely no bloody difference. If you do something incorrect, out of time, out of tune, try to go too fast, the steel will punish you. Just like the bees will if we try to uh, try to make them rush. Bees don't like to be rushed. Neither is this steel. As I said, the annealing process is de-stressing the steel. If you try to rush this part, well, it's going to be a little bit stressed. <laughs> it's not going to quite relax as much as what you would hope. How does the heat change the uh, the steel properties to make it non-magnetic? Look man, Aiden, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know, hey. All that I know is that I've gotta hit that magic number. <laughs> However, what I do know is that it does change a big, it, it causes a very large chemical reaction within the steel when it reaches that non-magnetic uh, temperature. When you quench the steel after it's reached non-magnetic, quenching the steel is super chilling it and getting it to tighten up and harden. And depending on whether or not you've done it correctly, will determine the grain structure. And just like timber, certain grain structures are more favorable than others. With the steel, you want nice, tight, hard grain structures. It actually shows up very similar to like the uh, like the rings of timber when you cut down a tree. If you slice a piece of hardened metal in half, put it under a micron uh, a microscope, you'll actually be able to see the grain structure of the steel changes dramatically. Skills. And uh, 
you know, doing the best that we have with what we have. little bit right on the tip of the blade. Sorry this is taking so long but you know it is what it is. As I said I wanted to show you things in real life. You know I don't really want to be hiding any mistakes because at the end of the day I'm still learning and for those of you who are trying to do the same thing at home or are thinking about it and I really want to be able to show you guys the problems that you can face as well. The big difference between these two blades is the blade thickness. So how long that actual blade is. This is a much longer blade which means that we have a lot more steel that we have to essentially regulate that temperature. video a big big thank you to you you know I appreciate the fact that they're long videos but at the end of the day what can I say everything we do we don't have the proper tools we don't have the biggest brightest fanciest tools and what we do takes a long time that's why you know I'm lucky enough to have a Mel who lets me play with bur bur burning hot steel big gas forges during winter. That's why we do these uh, crazy little hobbies and adventures. Keeps me busy, keeps me out of her hair, and everybody has a good time. And there we go, that's it. creep across the face. As I said, this is why I do it at night, is so that I can see these minute details. The small things that change, you know, the end result of how things turn out. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Mel. We, uh, you know, we do need to make one for us. Well, sorry, I do need to make one for us. I absolutely agree. The other thing that I'm getting to enjoy is the fact that uh, you guys can still see nearly a completely red blade through the camera, but for me, the whole thing's nearly dulled right off to a really subdued colored red. All right, guys. That is it for me. The knives are now annealed. 
I'm going to wait until the morning. I'll pick them up. I'll run a file over them, make sure that they're annealed. Doing my job properly, they should be ready for heat treating and quenching tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, do another live. It'll either be Facebook or YouTube, depending on who's going to let me do it. And um, yeah, I'd appreciate appreciate you guys turning up, giving us a like, and uh, sharing it with your friends who might find this interesting. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow.